A monoplane takes off from Croydon Airport on a sunny July evening bound for Brussels. There are seven people on board. An hour later, the pilot makes an emergency landing on a deserted Normandy beach. By chance, a local army unit is training nearby. They see the plane land and rush to help, taking around six minutes to reach it. Six passengers and crew have already disembarked. The plane is undamaged, nothing to report other than one crucial detail. A passenger is missing. Alfred Lowenstein, the plane's owner and the third richest man in the world, has disappeared. The senior army officer in the rescue party, Lieutenant Marquet, begins taking statements from all on board. These are very confused. The first is from Baxter, personal valet to the tycoon. Mr. Lowenstein went to the lavatory, says Baxter. After 10 minutes, we called through the door, but there was no reply. When we forced the door, we found the bathroom empty and the exterior door was open. The lieutenant then turns to Donald Drew, the pilot. In theory, Drew cannot have been physically involved with the fall because the cockpit is closed off from the rest of the plane. But Drew is acting very strangely and gives evasive answers. Only after half an hour does he finally admit the obvious. Lowenstein appears to have fallen into the sea. A French detective, Inspector Bonneau, arrives at the scene. He also finds the eyewitness accounts incomprehensible. Later, many would use the same word to describe Bonneau's decision to release the surviving passengers and crew. They fly off and complete their journey to Belgium. A most unusual and mysterious case, Bono later tells the press. Anything is possible. Not quite anything. As Sherlock Holmes points out, the trick to solving a mystery is to eliminate the impossible. What remains will contain the solution. The problem in this case is separating the impossible from the extremely unlikely. Questions linger heavy Tycoon's final flight Whispers of foul play